irmãos que estão conectados conosco. I want to greet the brethren who are connected with us and the church here in Pompano with the peace of the Lord. Let us stand up, my beloved. We're going to read the book of Songs of Solomon, chapter 2. Songs of Solomon, chapter 2. I invite the brethren to read with me until verse 6, from 1 to 6, Songs, chapter 2, verses between 1 to 6. Let us read together. I am the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valleys. Like a lily among thorns, so is my love among the daughters. Like an apple tree among the trees of the woods, so is my beloved among the sons. I sat down in his shade with great delight, and his fruit was sweet to my taste. He brought me to the banquet house, and his banner over me was love. Sustain me with cakes of raisins, refresh me with apples, for I am love sick. His left hand is under my head, and his right hand embraces me. Until verse 6, let us pray, let us glorify the, glorify the name of the Lord. Lord, give you praise for the privilege of being in your house, Lord. You give alleluia for the, your people gathered in your name, because you want to offer to you all our gratitude for forgiveness of sin, for the fellowship obtained, for the song that we sang to you. We praise you, Lord, because our angels minister in our behalf, acting in our minds and hearts. We give you hallelujah, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. The church may be seated. I read in the book of Song of Psalms is a poetic book. It's the greatest of the songs. The first verse in a, a few translations, the title of the book is the Songs of Songs, which is of Solomon. It's a book that many interpret as a poetry of love between the husband and wife and between the groom and the bride. And it's only this. And, but we understand that besides being a poetic book, it fundamentally is a prophetic book because it points out to a relationship of the bride, which is the church, and the groom, who is the Lord Jesus. So his interpretation in our optic is not a, a literal interpretation, but in fact is a re revelation of a relationship between Jesus as the groom and the faithful church as the bride. This relationship, it extends throughout the book. It's a book that has eight chapters, and it has a message, a central message, which is the rapture of the church. So each chapter unfolds in a dialogue between the groom and the bride, and it presents this unfold, glorious unfolding, which is the coming of the groom to meet the bride. So it's a wonderful book. In the past, we used to study this book in our seminars, three or four classes, dissecting uh, two chapters per class. was a great opportunity. And today, we don't have this opportunity of so many classes. And even so, in our seminars, this book is explored and it's revealed to us. Very well. So since this book is a prophetic book, each verse, it deals with the bride, which is the church. 
and it has to do with us. We are the faithful bride. We are the faithful church. We have as our greatest objective in our lives to be with the groom who is the Lord Jesus. We have this desire, this greatest desire, which is departing to the eternity uh, with the physical uh, depart from this physical life is to meet Jesus in the day of the rapture. I want to change this microphone. It should be pointed out exactly here. Okay. I'm used to this one here. This microphone it always gives me trouble. But I thank the bread from the technical department that always helped me. But I was saying that our greatest objective, of course, if we die today, we're going to be with Jesus. The Bible says that being with Christ is infinitely better than to be amongst the brethren. This is a wonderful thing for us, to be amongst brethren. But speaking with, with Christ is infinitely better than, says the Apostle Paul. And the Bible tells us that as we leave this physical body, or in other words, when we depart to eternity with our natural death, our spirit will live eternally. The Bible says the dust goes back to the ground and the spirit goes back to, death, to God. So if you are firm in the Lord and you depart to eternity, the first thing that is going to happen is that you're going to enter into the celestial gates with Christ Jesus. When Stephen was stoned, do the brethren remember this? When he was stoned, he said that he has seen a vision. It's registered in the book of Acts of the Apostles. When he was about to die, he said, I see the heavens open and the Son of God standing at the right side of the throne. And that demonstrates to us clearly this and other texts that the Lord Jesus gets up from his throne to receive a, a servant, a faithful servant that departs to eternity. So be assured, my brethren, that if you are firm in the presence of the Lord, if you believe that the only sufficient Savior of your life, that he shed his blood to save you, and that you firm is in the Lord every day, Whoever persevere to the end, this will be saved, the Bible says. If you depart to eternity right now, you'll be walking with Jesus through the celestial gates. There is a reality. Nobody wants to depart. I was even talking today with a brother. Nobody goes uh, ahead in the line. Let the line takes its own course. When my time comes, then I will present myself, right? So what do we desire? What is our desire? We want to see the rapture of the church because the rapture will be the coming of the Lord Jesus through the clouds. The Bible says the dead in Christ, the bodies were going to be transformed, right? The spirit is already with God, with the Lord in the glory. But the body will be resurrected and this body will be transformed and we will be raptured. The dead in Christ will be raptured, transformed, and we, the living, will be transformed in heavenly bodies and we will be raptured. Amen, my brother. You understand? So this is going to be the glorious day for us. It's better than dying. It's, it's to be raptured, alive. The great day for us, a great desire is the arrival of the Lord Jesus. So our message is Jesus died, Jesus resurrected, and He will come back to take us to be with Him. So our greatest message is Maranatha, the Lord Jesus is coming. And He's coming through the clouds to rapture, to take us to Him. This is our message, this is our doctrine. We believe that we are going to be raptured before the millennium. So there is a, even a technical name that I'm not even going to say. We will be raptured before the millennium. The church is not going to go through the tribulation. 
So the book of the Songs of Solomon introduced this whole context, this whole context is to say that the faithful bride that maintains this relationship with the groom, which is the Lord Jesus, the church with the Lord Jesus, waiting for this glorious day. And this day will come at any moment. What is happening in the world? The prophecy is the prophecies being fulfilled. Is the, the world is mourning. What we've seen here in our seminar, Apostle Paul in Romans 8 says this, and nature is mourning. We see the catastrophes. We mourn. The days are evil. The Bible says that the days are heavy. They are difficult. But there is a third mourning which is the morning of the Holy Spirit. This morning is, uh, is the morning of this song, of the eight chapters. The Holy Spirit is mourning for us in a way that cannot be expressed. We cannot even explain the way that the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, but He prays so that we remain standing and prepared for the great day of the rapture. Glory to the name of the Lord for this. So the faithful church leaves this great for this great day, we are running uh, uh, around, working, the others have vacation, the others taking care of their lives, but we have a great hope, which is the greatest hope of the faithful church. The groom is going to come to take his bride. In the book, goes in this beautiful poetry, I am the Rose of Saron and the Lily of the Valleys. Jesus introduced himself as the Rose of Sharon in the Lila Valleys. Like a lily amongst thorns, so is my love among the daughters. Because the lily grows from the mud, and there is it's a green uh, stem, and then the, the flower is very white, and it it blossoms very pure. That's how the church is. The faithful church lives this way. We are in the world, but we don't belong to this world. We don't belong to it. We live in the world. We need to work, to make money, to study, to have a career, all of this, but we don't belong to this world. The Lord Jesus told this to us. Like an apple tree among the trees of the woods, so is my beloved amongst the sons. I sat down in his shadow with great delight, and his food was sweet to my taste. So Jesus Christ for us is this shade, shade of the, the apple tree. Why apple tree? Because the apple tree is the fruit that you need to eat right now. You cannot eat a, an apple, leave it on the table, and come the next day or the afternoon. It, it oxidizes. It is a fruit that you feed off of the sweetness of that moment. So, my brethren, tonight, we sit down here under the apple tree. And the fruit of the Lord is His Word, is a praise. We are feeding off of it. It is a brother and sister that stands up and glorifies the child that sings, an instrument that plays a musical song of a uh, note of glorification to the Lord is a silent prayer that you ask. The glorification that you said when you entered through the door for the blessing that the Lord giving, has given you throughout this week for the peace that is in your heart. We are taking a bite on this apple and resting under the shade of the Almighty. He gives, gives us this rest. So amongst the trees, amongst the woods is my beloved uh, underneath, I sit down, and this taste is good to my, to me. So this fruit, or this song, is the fruit of the spirit we just sang. About the fruit of the spirit that can be surmised in one word, love. We just sang about that, the great love of my Lord. What a beautiful song! I even said to the brother, "What a wonderful song! Is the great love of God towards us?" It is the unconditional love. The fruit of the Spirit is centralized. We don't, we don't speak about the fruits. We speak about the fruit. It has several uh, subdivisions. as a love, peace, uh, faithfulness, self-control. 
So they're all subdivisions of the fruit uh, is centralized in the love of God, in the love of the Holy Spirit towards our life. So under this shade, we are sitting down, we are sitting down, and we are resting under the shade of the Almighty. So this shade, my brethren, make us be uh, uh, enjoying this, this, this delight. The fruit of the Lord is strengthen us and the text on China so that we can come to the end. So he brought me to the banquet house. What a wonderful thing. You entered here into a banquet, spiritual banquet. We are in the house of the banquet. If we could put here a sign here saying, the banquet today has a name. What is the name? The great love of my God, of my Lord. This is the unconditional love that He loved us with, independent on us, independent of you, your sin, my sin, independent of this. The great love of my, my God was able to reach me, make me sit down under the apple tree, the shade of the, under the shade of the Almighty, and rest. Uh, rest under this shade and seek the blessing that He has for us. Under it, I sit down and brought me to the banquet house and His banner over me was love. And now my brand, bring it to a close, it says, sustain me with cakes of raisins, refresh me with apples. And I said, uh, apple is the fruit for the moment, is a blessing that you and I are receiving today, at this moment, in this instant, the word has been said, when you say, glory to God, you are being fed. You are saying, Lord, I receive this blessing. I glorify you. And it testifies in my heart. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It is the apple, the sweetness of the apple. But the word of God, the prophetic word, has a meaning which goes beyond Today, which is the raisin, is a fruit that you uh, keep at home and you take home. And tomorrow, Monday, Tuesday, you remember the Word of God. You remember the shade of the Almighty. And you remember the banquet of love. You remember the song. You remember the Word. You will not have the apple anymore. But you have the raisin. The raisin you sustain your life. In revealed Lord, it doesn't get old. When you put on your mouth, you feel the same sweetness that you are feeling here in the service tonight. Why? Because the same angel who is here, he will operate, he will follow you. The same operation of the Holy Spirit which is here will follow you in your days. You remember this word, you remember this word, and you remember the sweetness of the revelation, and you will glorify the name of the Lord. And this for us more than the comfort. The comfort is now, but sustenance is in our daily lives. That's why we love. The psalmist says, How beloved are your tabernacles. How good it is to come to the house of the Lord. It's better to be here than in any other place, than a thousand times in any other place. You don't understand, my brethren? So the Word of God, it feeds us at the moment and also feeds us in the following days because it is prophetic. And the text finishes, the six verses finishing the following way. His left hand is under my head. Why under the head? Because the head is the mind. This mind of ours that thinks and spins that sometimes does not sleep and worries and that all those things that sometimes you have to hit it so that he may turn off. Isn't it true? In your left hand, his left hand is under my head. So in other words, the hand of the Lord that sustains our thoughts. He's the one who cleanses our thoughts. He's the one who removes from our minds sometimes doubtful thoughts, dubious thoughts. At the same time that you're glorifying the Lord, sometimes you are thinking ill of your brother. 
to sometimes you, you need you see things differently. But Lord, uh, am I, why am I think, thinking this? I cannot think those things. To make the blood of Jesus has power. Put your hand on, under my head, Lord. Give me a strong hand, Lord, in, in the Lord. What the prophet Isaiah said is that mind has the hand of the Lord sustaining our thoughts, sustaining our ideas, sustaining our projects, because our thoughts need to be in the hands of the Lord. And that's what the Lord is doing today. Even in relation to a sister who entered here with the thoughts, dubious thoughts, with the way of acting which is double, depending on her uh, mood, she changed her action. She's kind to someone, and de depending on her mood, she becomes a, a beast. Uh, today I'm going to give you a crown of diamonds. Is a strong mind in the Lord. So my, my sister, your mind and our, 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 our minds may be under the hands of the Lord, that the hand of the Lord may be under our head, sustaining our minds so that we have holy thoughts, thoughts that glorify the Lord, projects that glorify the name of the Lord. And the text finishes, and, and his right hand embraces me, because the work, my brethren, is not of an individual. The work is of the body. The church, the bride, is the body of Christ. You have great importance here for this church because you are part of the body of Christ. But your mind needs to be firm in the Lord. We are in a banquet, the banquet of the great love of my Lord. And He is sustaining us on the shade with the sweetness of the apple. You bring raisins in your heart. You carry raisins in your bag for the days that follow, you will not forget. Each meth message has its moment. Tomorrow there is another message, and night there is another message, but the raisin of revelation will be will remain in your heart. At the right time, the Holy Spirit will remove it and put it in your mouth, and you remember the sweetness and the blessing of the Lord. And above all, the mind protected under the powerful hands of the Lord. Let us stand up and glorify the name of the Lord. This is the song of victory.
Glory to God. Hallelujah, Lord. Glory to God. We praise you, Lord. We glorify you. This night, this blessed night in your presence. For your glorious arrival that is coming near. For a church which is prepared. Resting under your shade, Lord. Because their firm mind in your Lord. Because your constant embrace the Holy Spirit gives us. Hallelujah for this glorious hope. In your name we say the wonderful grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet consolations of the Holy Spirit be resting upon uh, you now until the glorious arrival of the Lord Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. Pastor Renildo. My brethren, peace of the Lord. If somebody desires assistance, prayer, we make ourselves available to you. Reminded that tomorrow at 10 30, we have Sunday school. The brethren are proclaimed to be here present to once again learn of what has been for us, our strength, which is the doctrine. Amen. And tomorrow also at 6 30. 6.15, we have a youth meeting, 6.15, 6, into all the peace of the Lord. Meeting in Group C, after the assistance. Thank you. 